I'm Ross Lawrenson. I'm a Professor of Population Health at the University of Waikato, which is in the North Island of New Zealand. Um, I also work as um, Director of Strategy and Funding for the Waikato um, District Health Board, which is our funder of um, and provider of health services for our region. So our region is uh, um, around 20, 23,000 square kilometres, has 400,000 population. Um, or two thirds of our population live outside of our main centre of Hamilton, um, and 20, 22% of our population are Māori, who are the indigenous people of New Zealand. So the University of Waikato is very interested in developing a new medical program that will offer some diversity to the current uh, two excellent programs that are already being run in New Zealand. And we're really attracted by the idea of a community engaged program, uh, particularly one that will relate to both rural populations um, and our indigenous population. So I'm finding the, the Iceman conference fascinating um, and it's been a real eye-opener about different ways of doing things. Some of the things that I want to bring back to the Waikato are particularly around the discussions around curriculum and curriculum development. Um, I've been involved in curriculum development for medical programs for the last 20 years um, and there's been some really refreshing ideas that I've picked up from this conference about how to go about um, developing a curriculum that is um, uh, different to the curriculums that we've had in the past. The, the science-based, um, heavily um, um, hospital-orientated curricula that um, I've been used to in the past. Um, I think that the second thing that I'm really um, looking forward to is understanding ways of uh, engaging the community, and I think that's a real challenge for us, both from the way that we manage our health services, but also for universities. Um, and one of the, the great things about uh, my recent move to the University of Waikato has been that uh, I think it's a university that's really embedded with its community and committed to serving the needs of its community. So we hope that we can actually transfer that commitment into a medical program that will similarly um, um, uh, do that. So those have been two, two aspects. A third aspect is how we engage with uh, our indigenous communities. Um, I think that we have a lot of advantages in New Zealand with our um, current relationships uh, uh, and uh, partnerships with uh, Māori and our iwi, um, but there are different ways of doing that and I've certainly picked up some really good tips from both our conference on the move where we um, saw a number of First Nations um, communities who are really driving their own health services and also from um, meeting with colleagues from Australia and um, where the um, issues for Aboriginal people is really important. So I guess that last comment really leads to the you know the other great thing about this conference, which is networking um, and meeting people with common interests, common ideas, common problems, um, but have found different solutions from around the world. From our keynote speech this morning from Suet from um, uh, Thailand um, to um, colleagues, as I said, from Australia and New Zealand, um, but also um, from further afield. So I'm really looking forward to the further discussions at the conference and uh, have uh, found it really worthwhile. I have had 10 years of experience of managing a medical program in the Waikato for the University of Auckland um, and I think that there's been you know, a number of learnings from that. I think one of the things that um, I have picked up has been about the um, issues around looking after students and um, the mental health of students and the, and the general health of students and one of the problems that we've had in the past is sending students to rural communities and then becoming quite isolated and quite distressed. Um, sometimes we've had to pull them back out of those communities um, because they've had difficulties adjusting and I think that I've got a, a wonderful, I had a wonderful manager at the University of Auckland who was very engaged with the students and the students trusted her complete confidentiality so they would go to Raywin, who was my manager, with all sorts of problems in confidence, and Raywin could sift those and say, 
actually I think this is a mental health problem and Ross you need to sort this one out or this is a you know a social problem they you know she's just broken up with her boyfriend um, and it's causing problems and you know we need to just give her some time out and let her you know reestablish her thing so I think that's a really important part of you know looking after students particularly in rural communities where there's a health service in our big centres for students um, and they have lots of support but when we send them out into um, less um, uh, communities with less support then that's uh, an important issue. I think the other thing that um, I'm looking at that I haven't heard a lot about is how we use technology and how we get students engaging with technology. So we all use technology for teaching um, and video conferencing and but I think, it, it, as we heard from Suet this morning, you know, technology is changing, and if we're not uh, um, be masters of the technology, we actually have to identify how we use those technologies. And I think that's something that I've uh, learning from our engagement and our health board are, are massively um, engaging with new technology, both for patient engagement. Um, but also for some of the technologies around digital imaging, um, teledermatology and those sorts of things where we've really got to actually master the technology otherwise we'll end up with no rural doctors. We'll just have a video conference screen um, and rural patients will come in and talk to the screen and I don't think that's the future that any of us want. So those are my thoughts. Thank you.